we're given the addition formula cos a plus b and essentially asked to derive the addition formula cos a minus b. So what we can do is let b equal say minus c and just replace all instances of b by minus c. I would avoid letting b equal minus b. I think that's a bit confusing. I'm just going to get our result in terms of c and then turn it back into b at the end because you can call them anything you like. So therefore cos a plus minus c is going to equal, like, like using this result here, I'm just replacing all of my b's by minus c, I'm going to get cos a cos minus c, then minus sine a sine minus c. So cos a minus c is going to equal, now here's the thing, cos of minus c, cos is symmetrical about the y-axis. If you do a reflection in the y-axis, which is what is happening here, then you get the same thing. It's actually called an even function. Might not go into detail on that, but just be aware that it's actually equal to cos c. It's going to really help to know your graphs to do this. Of course, you could alternatively just try values out, but knowing this is going to be, or using this is going to be crucial. Sine, on the other hand, is known as an odd function, because actually this is equal to minus sine c. Because whatever you get, if you have sine of 30, it's actually um, minus sine of minus 30. It's just a, it's a reflection in the y-axis and then also in the x-axis. And then that means that cos a minus c is going to be cos a cos c, but plus sine a sine c, because I've got this double negative going on. And I can either say the result follows, or just write down that cos a minus b equals, basically replace c back by b, cos a cos b plus sine a sine b. I'll just write down replace c plus b. Okay, quite tricky if you've never seen that before, but that's something to take away from this question. Even and odd functions, particularly for cos and sine, these two results. Now in b, we're given that f of theta is defined as this. So f of theta equals that, where theta is in degrees, and we're asked to show that it can be simplified simply to cos squared theta minus a quarter. So what I'm going to do is use our results that we've just obtained. f of theta is therefore going to be cos theta, sorry, yeah, cos theta cos 30 minus sine theta sine 30 multiplied by the second one cos theta cos 30 plus sine theta sine 30. All right, time to work out what cos 30 and sine 30 are. You can put them in your calculator. They're actually exact values. So I'm going to get root 3 over 2 cos theta minus a half sine theta multiplied by root 3 over 2 cos theta plus a half sine theta. And when I expand this out, root 3 over 2 times root 3 over 2 gives me 3 over 4 cos squared theta. And I'm going to get a plus cos times sine term and a minus cos times sine term. So you can write them in, or I think we can just ignore it. We're just going to get minus a quarter sine squared theta. This is your kind of classic difference of two squares. So if you have x minus 1, x plus 1, you just get x squared minus 1 because you get a plus x term and a minus x term. This allows you to also factorize this back. We're nearly there. I just now need to replace the sine squared by 1 minus cos squared. So 
got to show enough reasoning here. So then I'm going to get a plus quarter cos squared, which gives me overall cos squared theta. And I'm going to get a minus quarter, which is exactly what we're after. Good. Finally, in part C, we're asked to determine the maximum and minimum values of this f of theta. Now, we do not want to use this version. We want to use this much more simplified version that's just in terms of cos squared and uh, constant minus a quarter. So, in fact, I'm just going to write that down. f of theta is cos squared theta minus a quarter. Okay, so let's look at the maximum value. Well, the maximum value of cos is 1, and therefore the maximum value of f theta is going to be 1 squared minus a quarter, which is going to be 3 quarters. And this, let's actually put a box around that because that's the key result, this will um, occur when cos squared theta is equal to 1. So when cos theta is equal to plus or minus 1, actually that's very important, that plus or minus 1 bit, because if we look at the cos graph, all right, well cos actually hits 1 when theta is 0, but it's asked for the smallest positive value. The next one where it hits 1, it's all the way at 360, but it hits minus 1 at 180. So that's going to be our smallest positive value. Smallest. If you're doing it without the graphs, then you're just going to have to do inverse cos of 1 and inverse cos of minus 1, and then kind of work out the solutions and see that it's 180 that is the smallest. Then what about the minimum? Now be careful here because cos, although cos can equal minus 1, cos squared would then be 1. So the minimum value of cos squared is actually 0. So the minimum value of the function is minus a quarter. This will occur when cos squared is 0, so when cos is equal to 0. And you can either do inverse of cos, or you can again look at the graph. We see that it's at 90. It's worth, it's worth knowing that cos hits 0 at 90 and 270 and so on. So smallest. Positive theta is 90 degrees.